6.01 p.m. on Monday, October the 9th. I'd like to call the Woodbury Select Board meeting to order, please. Any adjustments to the published Select Board agenda? I just want to read off the report uh, that Paul Cerruti sent by email at okay. some point there. Uh, where should we put that? Well, let's put it uh, uh, under down by local, uh, road commissioner report. Yeah, let's do it. Do it after Mr. Larrabee's report. Okay. 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 I hope you didn't think it's a holiday. <laughs> Any other adjustments to the published agenda? Okay. Hearing none. Uh, the approval of bills and payroll orders are in front of the select board. They have not been reviewed yet, but we reviewed after the meeting and submitted to the town office tomorrow morning. Um, the minutes from the September 25th meeting were reviewed and signed by the select board. And so now we are open for public comment. Okay. Hearing none, uh, I'd like to ask Mr. Rathburn. Um, oh, he's not coming. Oh, he's not coming. <clears throat> okay, let's do that. Do you, Brandy, did you want to talk at all about what Ron Rathburn was asking? Ron Rathburn's house is located on Cabot Road. Um, during the storm, the FEMA storm, um, two of our bridges, one of our bridges and one of our culverts backed the water up, undermining his garage and leaving a mess in the stream behind his place of business. Um, therefore, he, which I was not there for the state, um, the state walkthrough yep. um, two invoices were submitted one from BP and Sons and one from Chuck Bachelor for fixing um, and putting up a retaining wall so it doesn't happen again um, the uh, yeah the uh, they first got caught in the stream right after the flood and um, we're told to, you know to wait and get a permit so they got a permit from Jared Borg and um, what Ron was hoping was that somehow this could be a town project but I don't think so it's you know, he, I don't see how it could be so he brought those things down to Brandy but He's got other options. Is that the invoice for fifteen hundred dollars? Uh, nineteen hundred. Nineteen hundred. And then another from Brian Perry and Sons for sixty-one forty. Six thousand one hundred and forty. Six thousand one hundred and forty. They poured a retaining well for his garage so that um, hypothetically, yeah. if. Um, Beaver dams decide to give, or we have another flood that um, it's not going to wash away his driveway, or his uh, yeah, his basically the water came down and sort of undermined the back part of his garage. So, did Mr. Rathrun put in a claim? No, with FEMA. No. All right. Well, I'm not going to touch it until he does that. I mm. can't. I met with him today and told him that he could until October. Well, um, he didn't sound real interested. Uh, he also did submit to another program, the uh, ACC Community. It's a business. I, the ACCD, a, a Agency of Community. Mm, Common. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> they have a program with millions of dollars set aside to help businesses. So he did apply to that. Okay. And they have they wrote back, of course, and asked for some more information. So he doesn't know how that's going to work out. But, but he made no 
insurance claim, made no FEMA claim. No, I don't as far think as we had, know. No, he made an insurance it claim. Was a, it was a, um, oh, we've got to get a permit through the state. Um, but then he was informed that by the town not to touch anything in the stream because that was town. No, he was, no, that's not true. He was told by the state that he couldn't work in the stream without state permission. So then a week or so later, he did get state permission. So the other thing a year, a few years ago, that bank slid going up Calvet Road mm -hmm. by the guardrails. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if he, yeah. So he, it he slid again. <laughs> um, yeah, a part of it mm -hmm. fell down again. Um, so yeah, whether it's up to the board to decide whether it's um, a town thing or a individual um, Brandy, do you know, because I'm assuming you had a conversation with him, mm -hmm. do you know why he didn't apply for FEMA as a private person for this? Because uh, history, every time there's a flood, he, he um, just takes care of it up on his own. Oh, okay. And gotcha. he goes and checks the beaver dams, and he oh. um, does his own... Um, Mm -hmm. Because it's his property that's it's um, it over here on the line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, over there. And he feels like it's because of the failure of no, the town count. facility that he's has that he's had these issues. Is that is that the this basic main one undermining was a failure of the culvert system. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, my bridge came apart because of a failure by the state to maintain their culvert system. But were you able to apply for FEMA? Yeah, and I did. Hmm. Yeah, I he didn't had, come to the town for it. He taped. He had some. And I didn't go to the state for it. I followed the channels that you're supposed to use to okay. gain funding. Hmm. So and those came that, to me. So I shouldn't be the one defending it here. Yeah. You well, be. I just thought. I just thought because you, you, you knew should, some you of the background. You, should, you shouldn't be. So I'll contact him directly. He decided not to come tonight, so he's not really asking us anything. I just yeah. thought that because no, I think it's important, it, and, and I totally yeah. understand. I, I I would love to I would love to support everybody who had damage with yeah. town funds. That sounds awesome. Except there are no town funds well, that's to what do FEMA this. Is. That's yeah. what We're FEMA is for. We're spending money and hoping, and to, hoping get to get it money back. Right. right. We only get it if it meets. But we only get it if people actually are proactive and apply for it, so that there's backing. There has to be an evidence trail, and it, yeah, it takes work. Mm -hmm. But I will, um, I will contact him directly and explain why it, we can't just pay for it. Yeah, we just can't, we just can't outright pay for it discussion that we should have about how to maybe do some mitigation in that stream up beyond him plus over here in the you know so the things in the future won't be so bad but that's a whole nother grant program I guess <laughs> yeah I mean if this is a chronic issue in this in this case and if there are I mean there are a lot of these around town if there's a chronic issue that we need to be addressing for the long term Mm. There's a there's a way to do that. Um, it sounds like this is a chronic issue. It, very yes. Right. <clears throat> At least three times since I've lived in Woodbury. Which sounds pretty chronic to me. Mm. Um, so it goes beyond, you know, if if every time we have, you know, a a, you know, magnitude five or six flooding event, which we've had a number of in the last mm. decade. That we're doing triage at you know the cost of an individual of you know over eight thousand um, dollars. That seems like a problem that needs a longer term solution. Mm. We're throwing that money at it every time. It doesn't. That's this is not. That's not a reasonable. It's not a reasonable way to handle it. Um, so there's a longer term problem that we have to address. Um, okay. So Ron is a short window if he is going to apply. As an individual, um, yeah, he's got like literally like three days. Yeah, do mm -hmm. they do extensions? Do you know, Scott? Uh, do a you what? You can write for an extension. Uh -huh. so they do it. I don't know. I've never written for one. Okay. I don't either. 
Yeah. So, well, he knows that he can go down to Barry within the next three days. He can do it and online. And he doesn't. He can do it online. That's what online. I did. It's but pretty simple. But, but it's kind of late to do it online because, I mean, if you could sit with somebody and talk about what you have to do, it would uh, be helpful. But if he can't do that, then I don't well, know. Barry's open the last day is... Tomorrow. Wednesday, it's tomorrow. I think. Tomorrow's, tomorrow's the last day. Do you know their hours? I thought it was Wednesday. I don't know that uh, one. Anyway, he knows that okay. option, and I don't think eight he's going to eight to five. He's going to wait and see how the other one works out. But you've already spoken to him. Is that yeah. true? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I just stopped to see what, what his, if he knew what his options were. Well, right now he's out a lot of money. Yeah. Um. I want to try to remedy that as fast as possible. <laughs> Wish we had known before he did the work. I know. Well, it's just harder to yeah, pay it back. A month ago, he probably would have had time to go down. And it's a lot harder to pay it back than it mm -hmm. is to have addressed it mm -hmm. as a... Uh, I'm trying to think of another way. The other, only other options are internal state grants, and most of those are, for individuals, are already passed. That I can think of. Well, the ACCD one is for businesses specifically, and, it's and it it's, is his business. And it's rolling. Yeah. That one's rolling. Yeah, right. So, all right. That's disappointing. Um, okay. Can we move on to the town clerk's report, please? Yep. Not too much to talk about tonight. The accordions are still coming in. Um, and I stopped at the town office before I came up here tonight to see if I'd gotten that estimate in for the basement, and it hasn't come in yet. But we did have this email in from Mrs. Meacham from the Quarry Road. I don't know if you want to talk about it now or if you want to wait until you get down to the old Quarry Road. I think we might as well just talk about it now. She has concerns about the work that might be being done up there. She thinks more work is being planned? I wonder where she got that idea. What's the rationale for spending public funds on this work? We, I mean, that's our job, sorry. Can that be read aloud? Yeah, I can, re I can, I can read it out. Um, good evening. I'm reaching out as I understand the select board will be discussing additional plans and road work for Old Quarry Road at tonight's meeting. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a Zoom link to attend virtually. Jonah is traveling for work and I am solo parenting this week so I cannot attend. Can the minutes be made available publicly before work commences? It seems like the work plan will be at the top of Old Quarry Road and will not impact the portion of the road that runs through our property. Please confirm. Also, I have a couple of additional questions. One, what is the rationale for spending public funds on this work? Who is it serving? Why is it in the town's best interest? Two, what is being done about the homeless encampment at the top of Old Quarry Road that poses a threat to health and safety of town residents? I used to hike and trail run up the road and I no longer feel safe as I know those living there are armed. Also, there isn't proper plumbing and sewage treatment either, which means potential exposure to trash and raw sewage that is not being handled properly. Thank you, Heather Meacham. So, on the agenda start with, here, start with. I wrote possible added clearing. We talked about this at the last meeting, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I think we already talked about this. Maybe I should have taken it off the agenda. But anyways, we'll talk about it again. It, uh, yeah. I don't think it has anything to do with with her end of the road. But well, Mr. Larrabee, are there are there plans for additional work on Old Quarry at this point? Uh, it was just it was brought up to clear the two small spurs above. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. To clear the brush. To clear the brush. And last meeting, I said that we can't do that because there's a fence up. Right. The people up above have a fence, and that would get tangled up in our mower and mm -hmm. it would just be an a mess. mess. Yeah. The fence is very much in our right of way, and probably should not be. 
I spoke so. with those people. Um, I went up there and talked to them about taking the fence down, mm -hmm. which they said that they would do. Um, I didn't have a specific time frame from you on when you might need it down. So they said that they would take it down before snow flies, but I'm mm. assuming if we had like a date um, to give them, if you yeah, had a date to plan the work. As soon as it's down, I mean, it's, it's not a lot of work to clear that brush mm -hmm. uh, that's in the right of way. So it's, as soon as it's down and their stuff is out of our way, uh -huh. then certainly we can, it won't, it's not a lot, a lot of work. So it's, okay. I would like to do it before the snow comes because our machine, that does the brush cutting is on our bucket loader. Mm -hmm. So if it's snowing, we're going to need our bucket loader. So I'd like to do it soon okay. if, if we're mm -hmm. going to try to do it this year. Okay. So say within the next two weeks, you want to tell them? To? I could tell them that, yeah. Um, yeah, that would be fine. And then, so when I went up to talk to them, I was trying not to push too hard because it, it was kind of an awkward conversation. Sure. Who was there? Um, it was the woman who owns the property and then her significant other mm -hmm. and they were pretty nice and receptive to all of it um, but just looking at the place like they can take the fence down there's still gonna be stuff, stuff in the right of way and there's like I don't even know where they would put it to I mean, be they're, honest they're parking their truck right in the middle of the right way yeah right, right? they're closing off that one section of, of our road I mentioned that and the guy said, um, Mike was his name, he said that um, he was happy to hear that there was plans to work on the spurs and he said that if the work was done he would start parking elsewhere but the way he explained it didn't really make sense to me. Um, he was kind of saying he was parking there because of the condition of the road which yeah. it doesn't make mm -hmm. any sense. It, but it, it doesn't matter, it's still our right still, road. Yeah. Still our road. Yeah. Right to maintain that road without mm -hmm. a vehicle parked in the middle of it. Yeah, and the other thing was there's one junk car and I did talk to her about moving that and she said that she is going to try to have it moved. Um, I wasn't able to get a time frame on that though. Yeah. I think we got to push a little bit here on this one. Okay. They're, they're sort of going to take advantage of it if we don't. Yeah, yeah. No, I totally get that. Mm -hmm. Um, so I can go tell them that we need the fence down within two weeks. Do you have other suggestions for, like, I don't know what to tell them to do with all the stuff. Like, there's yeah, a camper. Yeah, well, I mean, that little chunk of land is surrounded by town right away. Mm -hmm. There's really not much space there that is not it's in not town, right town right away. It's not in town right away. Yeah. So, I, mean, I don't know what to tell them as far as they bought a town right away, essentially. Yeah, yeah. And they're so just got a little triangle of land. That so, if the select board puts on letterhead a letter stating this is it and something needs to be done instead of, yeah, at this point, Gates will <laughs> gladly come and get the car. It's been there almost a year. It's been there a year. Yeah. Oh, there's one that's disa a disabled car? Oh, yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. right away. It's oh, is that the one that's right? Oh, okay. Hmm. Mm. I mean, they got they got tents. They've got there's a couple of campers there. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I think they can't help but that stuff being in that right away. Right. Got a fifty foot mm -hmm. right away, both you know, twenty five feet from the center of each side of them. And their property line isn't even up to the road on the other the road. When I'm looking at the map, it's on the road on the right. The right. property line is before that. Right. But, you know, who knows? I, I mean, I, it's, it's sort of a, a little bit of a mess, but mm -hmm. I, I think we have to act on it because it, otherwise they're going to be there for all winter and then it's, it's just going to be an ongoing problem. Okay. I have a question on this whole situation. Yes, Don't please. they go away in the winter? I mean, they'll be ready to leave in the next three or four weeks. I don't think they, they overwinter their stuff. Yeah, but if they're not taking their stuff, yeah, right. it's still yeah. a problem. So that's mm -hmm. why I think it's pretty important that to do it now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So should we tell them a week to get the get their fence down by? 
I think we should roll it into one letter. So, uh, like by the 16th, which is next Monday. I don't, I don't know if that's enough time yeah, considering okay. all the stuff, but. Okay. Um, the 20th, I mean, which is next Friday. So we can have. What do you think, Lizzie? October 20th? I guess. I don't know what to think about it, to be honest. I just, I don't think that they, I don't know how they're going to even do it, um, get the stuff out. Um, and I'm not saying that we shouldn't try to get them to. I just don't really know what to think about it. I'll draft a letter and pass it around to you all. Oh, okay. And um, and then we can sign it and send it, hopefully by Wednesday. How's that sound? Right. Gives them more than a week, okay. and at least they're on notice. Mm -hmm. that, um, and that'll address at least part of uh, Mrs. Meacham's question. Uh, as for you know, issues with runoff and trash. We can also roll that into the letter. Um, Some of that was addressed to, I went up with Josh Korn. You went up with Josh? Already? Yeah, okay. and I had just talked to Diana before the meeting started. I, I think maybe that portion we should talk about after the meeting. Okay. Um, but we did talk about that stuff too. Great, okay. Well, we'll leave that for executive okay. session. Okay. Uh, back to you, Mrs. Ricky. And then you had a request for the Sylvia Jackson Fund. Oh, shoot, I forgot to put that on the agenda. It's okay. Well, um, it can be rolled into the town You can do that project. in the uh, executive session also. Right, so that's the application. Yeah, mm. that would that'd be better in the executive session. <coughs> Personal. Mm -hmm. Got a question. Yes, please. Skip. Good question. Diana, you just said you were going to roll the... Sylvia Jackson request into an executive session. Mm. How, how are you going to do that? Oh, I don't know. Well, you can't. <laughs> you don't know. Let me get out my things. <clears throat> we have just some things better not to talk about in public, just for people's. The Sylvia Jackson fund? Personal. Yeah, if people ask you for help. Yeah, I know. I understand that. I'm well aware of what Sylvia Jackson Well, if you don't does. think we should put it in executive session, then what do you guys think? We could talk about it without using names, right? Yeah. I think that's fine. Unless you think the Sylvia Jackson fund is going to take you guys to court. <laughs> so, if we're talking about this right now, I have questions just on the background of the Sylvia Jackson fund. Because I don't know the criteria for... Um, you know, for being uh, eligible. So, shall we put it on the agenda somewhere else then? Use an adjustment to the. We can make an adjustment and put it somewhere else, or we could just do it since we're in it. Okay. I would say we just do it. I'm sorry, Bre uh, Robin. I intended to ask you to bring with you the little, I think, a one-page thing that talks about the. Uh, yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I forgot to ask you. Report. We sometimes put something in. No, we don't put anything in. into this. There used to be uh, a board. There used to be a board. It's true. That reviewed these yes. independently. And Barry residents can request help with these problems or others not listed. An application form is available at the town office. Requests remain confidential as much as possible. If you have a friend or neighbor in need of help, you can request an application, but the recipient must be willing and able to sign the application forms. Payments are ordinarily made to third parties like fuel or utility companies, for example. Cash payments cannot be made to the applicants. Uh, So, um, yeah, a few years ago, a person came to the board and said, I 
which has nothing to do with that. Oh, hold on. Yeah, you're right. So she wanted to make it sort of into a nonprofit where people could make donations and things like that, and that but the board was handling it, and the board eventually fell apart, so it came back to the select board to to deal with. That one, I don't. I think a problem with that one is it doesn't have a. It's hard to understand exactly what they're asking for. Well, there's no money attached. I mean, there's no number attached too. Well, That's there's probably the first thing. That there's a range of numbers attached, but it's contrary to what the actual request is about. Mm -hmm. I think that we need clarification before we go any further with this. It's just it's not clear what how much and what they're asking for. Because that's one thing. Yeah. And something else. Yeah. And that's that's all all reasonable and can't you know we can we can discuss it. But I, I think that there is in the, the little uh, rule page that we have. I'm pretty sure it says you can't come back more than once. But do you guys want to tell them that? This person is very close. We did help last year. Yep. Yeah. And she said that here. Yeah, she's yeah. there. They are yeah. um, frank about it, yeah. but without without clarification, mm -hmm. I don't think that we can. We need we need to basically send it back and ask for clarification as to what what specifically they're asking for cost wise and okay. and and what is being potentially funded. So that's. Gonna, that's just going to require some revision. I'm not saying mm -hmm. that it's denied. It's just yeah, it's, it needs yeah. revision for clarification. You said it will cost three to four hundred dollars, and I, it I has know. nothing to do it's with not, what their actually yeah. stated no, request is. This is this is what was last year. Yes. If you if, if when and how much winter of twenty one right for reason don't know how much. Well, I right. think it was five hundred dollars, but anyways. And then this is this is different. This, this is, is what they want. This oh, year. that's the request and for that, this year. And that's too vague for me. Yeah, right. Yeah. So no. Okay. Not without clarification. Okay. I want to know exactly what their request is. I want an explanation. That's more than that. Okay. Before we we yeah. take advantage of that okay. that fund. Uh, I'll write that. All right. Mr. Turkey, anything else that you want to bring up? Nope, that will do it. I got the, the, uh, something on the insurance today, right? Yes, I did. Oh, you got that. Okay. So you were going to put that in your section? Okay. I was going to give everybody a copy. Well, why don't we move on to you, Ms. Smith, since yep. the town treasurer's report is next anyway. Is that door open? It's kind of cold in here. Thank you. Didn't make that. Uh, Chris, did you see the um, email for the WER E23? Thank you. Oh. This one here. Okay. No, I did not. I have not seen this yet. Oh, that's on the agenda. Yeah. I know it's on the agenda, but no, I haven't okay. looked at it. So. Thing in there. All right, um, Ms. Smith, do you want to introduce what uh, what we're looking at here? Um, what you're looking at is a, a um, I didn't get to, I received this from our insurance claim that I put through for the town mm -hmm. office. So one mm -hmm. thing immediately I have to get fixed is for it to say town office instead yeah. of town hall. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Clearly, the location of photos mm -hmm. are all of the town hall. Um, she did not call me back. Therefore, um, I wanted her to explain to me all these goodies. Um, I looked through it, and I thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, did you get an answer out of reading it? Yeah, you know, some of the stuff, like, for example, there's nothing about the basement floor. Um, because we didn't, we have not right, had an, an yeah, estimate they, to submit they, to they, them for it. Um, but the es it doesn't seem like they used the estimate for the sheetrock, because they made up their own, which is better. 
they're using you know standard per square foot costs um, it, here they're advising the policyholder which I guess is the LCT that they should reserve twenty thousand dollars for the building and five thousand dollars for the content for the content yeah. But what they came up with is about ten thousand dollars, which I think ten thousand seven oh seven twenty three cents. So being Colonial's recommendation, yeah. I'm not sure we, well, the LCT is going with it. I have one already. Right. So that's why I didn't want to say and I'm pulling away from it. Yes or no? We're getting this. So, yeah, no. yeah. I mean, it, it, obviously, it says in there that there's just one. It's just one step. It's not an agreement or anything right. else. Okay. Um, next. Next. Financial statements that you have over the last two weeks, cash receipts are taken in $261,466.63. Um, that being of property taxes, delinquencies, copies, recording, vaults, zoning, etc. Payroll over the last two weeks, $9,183.50. Accounts payable, $39,517.69. I transfer $250,000 from the checking over to the money market. Um, elevator. Well, it's not an elevator. Let's get that right out of the way. Yeah, really. It's a lift. Okay. <laughs> Rain is coming. Yeah. I'll be able to sell <laughs> them eventually. Um, so, this is kind of interesting. It was before my time. So, Bob, Bob called me today. <laughs> I don't think Bob's here. Here we go. So, the people that we have been having maintain the elevate the lift <laughs> is not who put, installed it yeah so i put out i got on did my googling called three different companies mm -hmm. to get estimates emailed so i found exactly who installed it mm -hmm. and i said and i thought he was just the owner of who we currently have mm -hmm. he says you you guys never got back to me for maintenance because hmm. back in the day when it was installed, the state didn't have regulations of inspections. Oh, oh wow. But eventually they did, and we did hire somebody. He to says, do I can things. get whatever part you need for that. Oh. I think it's absolutely absurd that somebody so told you that, you have to that it's it. extinct. Wow. So I became Great. very irritated. Um, and he is going to come next week to oh, come wow. and do a... I said, thank you, since we've already spent $1,000 on... Yeah. Anyway, um, there's hope. Hey, that's not it. Really yeah. great. A brand new one. That's really great. Mm. That's a trim. Which, that's a which, um, trim. You want somebody who has a business to come to you in good faith and wants you to save money, not spend money in there. So, you, know, you just trust people very, <coughs> really. Mm. Anyway, so I'm excited about that. Mm. We are going to get our lift fixed. No standing on our head, counting to ten. <laughs> Um, since budgeting is right around the corner, um, mm -hmm. Kingdom Gravel is increasing their fees. That's just a thing that came through. Um, so I, I got to keep that in the back of my mind. Um, road salt agreement. Um, since the town only has one option. Right. Um, I had Alfie go ahead and sign that, and I sent that in. Um, since the snow will surely fly. Mm. Other goodies. I also put in a fuel bid RFP out to three companies. Um, I told them it was due. Calendar. Calendar that it was due um, next Friday, and you guys would be opening it on the 22nd. Is the next select board meeting? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. sounds yeah. right. Um, so fuel bids, we'll get that done and taken care of and out of the way. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, hopefully the elevator left will be fixed. Other stuff, uh, just dealing with lots of money rolling in. Okay. So our next meeting will be on the 23rd. 23rd. Mm -hmm. So that's when I said that it would be a decision made that night. Okay. Mm -hmm. I also talked with um, Barb from the state and that any adjustments to tax bills will be an abatement <coughs> that um, the town will have to hold an abatement hearing. Um, adjustments? Uh, we, for an instance, we had a, um, a lady who's a non-resident mm -hmm. come in and um, Give her report of the damage done to have her taxes reduced. Any changes cannot be done by the listers at this point, so it, it would have to be an abatement hearing. So she. This is because of the flood. The flood. Oh, so even though the listing is all of as of April one, there's a, a de different designation for flood. I mean, a lot of the people have had flood closed. damages. Right. So they're wanting, and, and, and that's not the only one that wants a deduction off their taxes. But um, we will have to hold abatement. I'm mm -hmm. hoping to do it all in one lump sum. There's more than one? Yep. Hmm. And there's lots of criteria that it's as far as insurance, are you getting a buyout? Are you getting... You want to see these? And I there's lots of... Mm. But that's the Board of Abatement that I'll have to... Okay. Do you have a time frame where you're that you're shooting for to do this? We were looking at the calendar <laughs> because the tax due date is October 27th. 27th, yeah. Um, Yeah, I mean, we could shoot for next week, do it on a Wednesday or an evening that we, but we have to get the whole crew. Mm -hmm. um, oh, so you've already got requests posted. in? It has to be posted. We do have requests. And the listers have made the adjustments? <coughs> they can't make they can't. adjustment. The grand list is closed. Well, they have to make an adjustment to the value of the property. It's up to the board to make that decision, oh, the abatement God. board. It's not up to the listeners. Can we send that back to Brandy? Thank you. Granted, they'll be at the meeting. Right, I realize that the board has to, you know, just to, do they give people whatever they want without the, That's a board. Without the uh, listeners even looking at it? Or? That the should listeners be interesting. will be invited. Mm -hmm. All right, so it's got to have to be before the 27th. That's what we know. How many are there? We have one in three. Yeah. Potentially three. Do we have a board of abatement or is that the BCA? Mm -hmm. It was like we did the other night. Oh, it's okay. a so I'll, be, <laughs> I'll be at this meeting. Okay. Find a good way to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> actually coming out and asking. The board, the, yeah, the board of tax abatement <laughs> is, is a little different from the board of civil authority. In fact, uh, is it made up of the same people or no, different? It'll people? be a different. It's a different group. Different. Well, it's pretty much the, the same listers, except the list, the treasurer, listers, the, and the treasurer are are involved. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is that any big number like the one we got last time with like seventy thousand dollars in the hole? What's that? Last time you reported this, the uh, highway sure, department was like seventy. Your financial statement. Yeah. Do two do front and the back. Mm -hmm. We will see that the highway is negative eighty-eight thousand, and the FEMA flooding is a negative hundred and four. Oh yeah. 
Is that still mostly materials or? Yeah, and renting the equipment. Yeah, okay. Not payroll. Mm -hmm. Did you say payroll? Don't feel bad. <laughs> It's really not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you say what? What did you ask about payroll? I no. did. Okay. I thought you said it's it, all payroll. No, I said it doesn't include pay payroll. Oh, right? Okay. okay. That's wrong. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, so we have a request from VTrans. Are you going to address that? Brian? Yeah, they have. Uh, they, in preparation for their project that might start sometime later this month, they're asking whether we have a different right-of-way width than the standard three rods for um, Cabot, Valley uh, Lake Cabot and Road, Street. Valley Lake Road, and Church Street. And I'm not aware that we do. Yep. So all we have to do We've is been pretty consistent. Yeah. Is so. make do a. We don't even have to sign anything. We just have to make a check here. There's three of them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that was that same paper I handed you, Chris. Yeah. Okay. Municipal Highway Stormwater Mitigation Program. You may have seen Michael's email. Yep. Um, I asked him to explain whether this was something there were plans for or uh, whether this had to do this latest about the, the mitigation, whatever was. Uh, had to do with any of the th stuff that's already in the works and he said that there's three projects that are already in the work they're already funded work along this county road was FY23 grants in aid FY24 grants in aid I think that's one that we just did an extension for is yet to be determined mm -hmm. and the East Hill project is a better roads grant work project End, end date for this project is 9-30-2024. And then there's also the Valley Lake Road culvert, which the, uh, sir, the uh, design work was supposed to be completed by October 6th. I don't think we've seen anything yet. Um, but everybody's behind, so... Did you, did you get any other projects you think we should be applying for grants for? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure there, <laughs> there are culverts, larger culverts that we can work on. Yeah. Um, Sounds certainly like... Certainly the work would be done next summer. The right. what? The work would have to be done next oh, summer. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I can get with Michael and see what, you know, point out some areas for us to look at because there's certainly there's areas that we can use that for and that covers like ditching replacing mm -hmm. culverts mm -hmm. yeah. all that well going back to what we discussed with the Rathburn property this seems like low hanging fruit for long term mitigation is mm -hmm. a better roads grant mm -hmm. yeah. right. and because that would because we could scale banks as well with that it's not just ditching we can scale banks back we can reinforce mm -hmm. things. Yeah. I mean, right. you know, as long as we're within the right of way and it's road focused improvement, especially mm -hmm. drainage related and yeah. mitigating runoff, mm -hmm. we yeah. can we can find so a way to get funding. So I think that there's a lot of projects that we could. Yeah. It's, it's just a matter of actually getting the proposals out. Yeah. 
So, Michael said here, I've not looked into the municipal stormwater grant that was mentioned to us, but would, it, it will if the select board and road crew think they would be interested in considering it. But isn't that, was that something that had a deadline <coughs> coming right up? Do you, I don't think I printed it out. I can look back. I don't recall what, yeah. what the time frame was. Yeah. So we need to find the time frame for the stormwater grant. Okay. Look for that. I'm gonna look right now. I'll do it later. Yeah, just do it later. Know. Just, just, just wait a minute. I'm not gonna. We're not gonna write it right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> More press. Let's do it. Yeah. No, I'm not happening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Um, All right. That deals with that. Great. Uh, so, can we have the update on our local hazard mitigation plan and emergency planning? Michael said that there was not a, nothing to update on the local hazard mitigation plan, but they do have someone from Regional Planning Commission coming to the Planning Commission meeting next Monday to talk about, um, you know, someone funding from, for working on that. And someone from, from where? Uh, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Commission. Yeah. To talk about funding and for that. And I don't know about other emergency planning, but anybody know about uh, other emergency planning? Do you have planning? anything that, that you want to bring up at all? <laughs> John, do you have anything you'd like to bring up at all? I don't think so at this okay. point. I mean, I know that we, we talked about sort of looking at where there's over overlap and we with the hazard stuff yeah. with the uh, planning yeah. or the emergency planning as well. But, um, yeah, uh, that, you know, at this point, I don't have anything really to add. I'm going to be on that committee with the, the hazard mitigation and we'll see how it fits together with the rest. Great. Did you like my idea of having Michael and Norman and John and Jim Schweithelm and somebody else from the fire department to form a little working group? Yeah, I see you're all waving your hands. And <laughs> <laughs> well, I just threw that out there, you know. I talked briefly with Michael and he the other day. No. Just affirmed that. Scrape together a few more folks and see what we can do with them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll keep that in mind. Okay, uh, Mr. Larrabee, would you give us the road commissioner's report, please? Sure. Uh, so, the plan for Carol Ray's bridge is done. It happened today. Um, Good. Well, had, the work is done. The work is done. Oh. Yeah. Uh, she asked for railings on the side, which that did not happen yet, but it will. Mm. Uh, but we took it, took the bridge all out, and put granite blocks or concrete blocks on top of mm -hmm. the existing abutments and so we raised mm -hmm. it 18 inches yeah. 20 inches okay and put gravel on both sides so the approaches are much mm -hmm. easier and gentle mm -hmm. so uh oh <laughs> i am one happy camper i don't have bridge <laughs> envy anymore i really thank the select board and the town mm -hmm. crew and and mr Lerner. Mm -hmm. thank you so much mm -hmm. Very much appreciated. It's safe. Vehicles can get across. Um, Excellent. And I drove over it four times. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Really appreciate it. Uh, bye. Oh, bye. <laughs> so how is that going to work as far as funding, having to do emergency work twice? That's okay. I mean. For Carol Ray's bridge? Yeah. That's not part of my FEMA for Carol Ray. At least not now. What? So my well, my job for what I'm doing for FEMA is public assistance. So anything to do with the municipality, yeah, like roads, 
Well, there, the, no, that was a class four row. That's why he was doing it. Okay, so it's now the select boards. Are they choosing to do class four rows? Well, we do it on a case by case basis now. We, if it's a road that we have worked on in the past, and that is one where we have replaced that, the town has replaced that bridge before. So that's a new policy. No, it's just the way it's. We don't have a policy. We don't have a but that's class four road policy. The town doesn't get sued. If the town has a policy and you stick to that policy, then you're covered. Yeah, that's why we're talking oh, about. You get this and you get that. It's we're not talking a about getting. A, we're talking about. We just had a discussion about whether or not to have a work on a class four road policy. Right. But since we don't have one, we just have to do try to be fair as far as what we've done in the past. Now Nichols Road, Nichols Pond. Well, we just stick with the okay. road. Okay. So I'm sorry. If, uh, if you send me the information, you know, for material labor, and I can get the X Y coordinates, I'll submit it to FEMA. Mm -hmm. But they're going to have questions. They're going to want to see our Class 4 road policy. Mm. Absent that. Yeah. yeah. I'll submit it. You know, it might come right back. I was told when I researched it that class they would cover Class 4 roads if it was a road that the town had maintained in the past. If you can demonstrate that the town had maintained it in the past. Yeah, I don't know. It's been a while since that's the last time that bridge was replaced. Yeah, they don't like ambiguity. So, mm. you know, I can submit it. I can submit it until the cows come home, but it might come right back. That was, well, the, that was one of the one of the sites that I brought. Um, we did a, we did a, there was a site visit. That was yeah. a site visit mm -hmm. with the FEMA engineer yeah. or whomever he was. Yeah, yeah well, he's kind of uh, a mystery man now. Yeah, it's so that's, that's a little bit scary, though, because the Jarnus Bridge is the same is in the same boat, so. Well, it's not though because the Jarnus is a Class Three road. Right, but he looked at it and. He, he didn't. I don't think that guy knew the distinction between Class Three and Class. Do you? Don't well, sell him short. <laughs> right, but the, I wasn't that. But the issue is, is that he was he was going to submit a report. Oh. Yeah. As to the cost and mm -hmm. put a put a estimate together mm -hmm. for that okay. repair. Yeah. So and if that is these. not happening and our deadline comes and goes, we're not going to get that included in our in our claim. And the worst part is not only what's been done so far, but the permanent fixture right. that's going to happen next year, and hopefully there's somebody online to do the design and an estimate. Right. Mm -hmm. Which brings me to another part of my yeah, report. Okay, well, I, <laughs> I, uh, I'm scheduled to meet with engineers on Thursday mm -hmm. this week uh, to look at rail trail and the two bridges mm -hmm. to get that process started. Thursday. Thursday. Yes, yeah. uh, we're meeting at Buck Lake intersection of the rail trail. At eight o'clock in the morning. You gonna walk it? No. Nope. Uh, Chris is bringing his side by side, okay. and he's gonna trolley mm -hmm. people back and forth. So um, Eric Moeller did say that it was fine to go up his driveway and unload there, yeah. which is a little closer. I don't know where people park if they go in at the Buck Lake and yeah, on the trail. Not there's not really a place parking other place. Than so. the alongside the road. But. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Depending on how many people there are, I mean, we should yeah. be able to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, with all so, that said, back to Carol Ray's Yeah, transcript. back to Carol Ray. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, when this whole started, when this all started, we determined that she, you know, it was a Class 4 road that has been maintained in the past as far as bridges and culverts. <laughs> bridges and culverts is what we've done in the past for class four roads. Right. I don't know. And that's stated in the yellow, in the orange book. From the is state. it? It's yeah. statue. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So that's defensible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so. That's part of the cabin road. Is that cabin road number two? Mm, no. No. It's no. addition in addition. Yeah. Mm. <coughs> yeah, I, I sort of kept those separate because 
they were, I, I met with, hmm? what's his name? I can never remember his name. His name is right. Lenny Hale. Lenny, so. Lenny. Lenny Hale. Yes. He's from so. Nebraska. He's from where? Nebraska. Oh. So that's why I kept those separate was because we met with, I met with him, showed him those sites. We did a bunch of math, a bunch mm -hmm. of measuring, and he was going to do estimates. Mm -hmm. And he said he was going to come back and oh. do other other sites. Mm -hmm. But as Skip says, he's a mystery man mm -hmm. now. We don't know if he's coming back or somebody mm -hmm. else, or if that's just. Uh, mm -hmm. That'll be part of my report. What happened to Lenny? He's in the <laughs> yeah. um, So I can do that. You know, I mean, he's feeding you the numbers, right? The numbers for yes, the is. time and the equipment and the granite, well, I mean, the concrete blocks and all that stuff. He is. Yeah. Yeah, a little behind, I'd say. Well, we're getting there. We're, we're getting there. It's, hey, you got like two weeks left, right? Three weeks. <laughs> so you, you talked to an engineer about designing those two bridges. Yes. Are those going to be less than eight thousand dollars a piece for no. design? The the design work. Yeah. I would hope so. Ask them to make sure that it's separate. Okay. They're two different projects. Yes. Okay. I need right. to talk with you some more about whatever, something you threw out last time about $3,000. You thought that there was a state law that usurped our purchasing policy? No, I was wrong. Oh, okay, good. I was wrong. That's why I never got back to you, because I was wrong. Okay. <laughs> After I looked it up, I was like, well, it wasn't right. So I just hit, put my head in the sand. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. Okay. So, um, yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm hoping that we can look at all three sites mm -hmm. with with them. Yeah. Uh, on Thursday, there's a soil engineer coming. Mm -hmm. they, so it's all state folks, or no? no? These are private. They're all it's private. The Wolf Engineering. The Wolf. So, so let me. The Wolf. And who else? Or just the Wolf? Uh, well, there's two guys coming from the Wolf, and mm -hmm. then there's soil. Um, soil engineer. Isn't it? But is it? Touch it without a soil engineer. Let me just explain how this happened. I reached out to Kevin Spaulding, asked if maybe they have some clever engineers on their staff that might be able to throw, you know, give us a little help on that project, which, you know, I mean, they still own the land, even though it's our trail. And so he did very kindly sent out an a email to other engineers in Rock of Ages and Swenson that might be, and the only thing that came back was, a recommendation that we that we try to hire Chris Temple from uh, DeWolf Engineers DeWolf. because he's worked with with snowmobile trails and stuff before. So um, I called him and he said uh, he was pretty much fully booked for the month, but <laughs> he uh, would try to fit in. He does work live in Woodbury. Mm -hmm. Tried to yank that chain a little bit. <laughs> And uh, so he he did say that he couldn't touch that landslide without a soil specialist. Um, yeah, what was the name of that guy? Um, geotech subcontractor uh, to look at that. And then he also said that he they might have time to do uh, the bridges as well because that's a separate department in his business. So. So that's how that came about, and and I've you've probably seen the correspondence that's gone back and forth Seth. since then about the, so it looks like if he's going to look at it, that's a good thing because you know I don't we're not going to find anybody else at this point to give us. And he said there are some cases where they've given estimates, even though they're not the contractor. Okay. They can give an yeah, estimate. Yeah, they can do material estimate. material costs yeah. and quantities and. Narrow it down. Something that we can use for. How quickly can I get that? October 20. No, what is it? November 2nd. Yeah. They know that. I think they know that's yeah, what well, we're they, working on. They definitely towards. know the, the sense of urgency that we're, that was upon us. Mm -hmm. So 
we had this plan for last Friday. Yeah. And then something got, mm. some, one of them had to cancel or something. <clears> so, yeah. uh, so then we decided that, they decided that Thursday was going to work. And I just mm -hmm. accepted whatever time mm -hmm. they were mm -hmm. able to come. So yeah. uh, it's Thursday morning at this point. Mm -hmm. So we will learn more then. So, yeah, yeah, and it might, another thing about the rail trail, it might mm -hmm. deserve a special meeting at some point. Because if the costs are anything near what that first estimate was, and the town ends up putting in 25% of that, that's mm -hmm. a lot of money for the town. So on that so, topic, yeah. I'll introduce Steve. Oh. Is for the vast. Oh, hi. Right. Mountain Dames Club. <laughs> what? Mountain, Mountain Dames, Dames Club. Oh, okay. I'm Steve Gray. From, oh, okay. From Callis. Okay. And yeah. with me tonight is I'm trail master uh -huh. for the Hassel Tone yeah. of Callis and Wood Bay. have been for oh. eons. With me tonight is Nolan Hudson. Nolan is vice president of our snowmobile club, which covers uh -huh. both the towns. Uh -huh. And our reason for being here tonight is we're obviously very interested in the rail trail mm. and the um, potential of getting it at least temporarily open for this winter. Uh, which probably is going to be repairs that fall short of what you folks are looking at in the long term. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is, and um, we're just here because we're very interested. That's an extremely important mm -hmm. trail, not just for the locals, but for the state of Vermont. Mm -hmm. It runs from Hartford, Vermont to Derby Long, really? oh. known as Quarter 14, mm -hmm. and um, we take care of a pretty good hunk of it uh, through our both Callis and Woodbury. Mm. So it's extremely important that we try to do, we've looked at some alternatives and have not found much that's satisfying yet. So uh, first question is, may at least I be there Thursday morning to a company I have my own transportation. So if it's all right with Alfie and others, I would like to be part of that mm -hmm. inspection. Um, and then just to let you know that the club, our club and the Vermont Association of Snow Travels, of which we are a member club, along with a hundred and some mm -hmm. other clubs, uh, have some funds available that might be made mm -hmm. usable mm -hmm. uh, for a temporary. And by temporary, I mean something just wide enough so that snowmobiles can get from point A on one side to point B on the other. We but the made, groomer? The groomer would not be necessary. We would mm -hmm. we would turn the groomer around and go back, but as long as the snowmobile traveling public can safely get through that section, uh, that would be our goal for this winter and mm -hmm. hope that next summer something more permanent could be done. Yeah. But that's that's all speculation. <coughs> yeah, I'm sorry we haven't had you. We're just here to say we're interested in helping. Yeah, we haven't had you in the loop yet, so that's good to know. If there was some stuff that, do you know Pete Halverson? Mm, no. He uh, has been doing a lot of research on this. He lives, oh, just yeah, just, I, just before you get to the Hardwick line, he lives somewhere okay. near, out there near the trail. And he got an estimate from oh, somebody who could put bridge. a bridge for yeah. like $50,000 $50, or something. Yeah. Which I think we can. Well, that was just for the, the cost of <laughs> the bridge itself. Cheaper. We can do better. better. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So would you have to have your snow machine trail wide enough for two machines, one going each way, or just a one-way Well, that would section? be ideal to have it six to eight feet wide, mm -hmm. so that and obviously it should be clearly marked as a hazard area, yep. travel ball, mm -hmm. and hopefully we can keep that down to, you know, 100 to 200 feet of that mm -hmm. whole trail. And, and I, it's too early to really say, because right. we haven't really mm -hmm. looked at it close enough to know what, if anything, temporary can be done. We think something could be, but um, so we study it a little further. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. We won't know. But again, uh, we just would like to be part of it, and uh, hopefully we can get something temporary to get by this winter. I don't know what that is. But. Yeah. Is there any, any way that, I haven't looked at a map, but I'm thinking of any way that, if we let people drive down Buck Lake Road, that there's any we've, way through the we've state. We've looked at that. Hmm? We've looked at that. Yeah. It'll cost more to fix that. Mm -hmm. we have to we, build a trail basically through the woods. Years ago, yeah. There might be one. <laughs> the Buck Lake Road goes past the conservation camp and it goes all the way through the Magville. But there's that yeah, but road. Yeah. And I believe it's still a class four road. I'm not sure, but I believe the it's trail. 
and uh, yeah. but there's a lot of work that would need to be done to that just uh, as a yeah. temporary yeah. and you folks are obviously looking at restoring the rail trail mm -hmm. to some permanent use at least another year and we would like to see if something temporary can be done there and not mm -hmm. a lot of money spent on mm -hmm. something that would be abandoned yeah. after one year mm -hmm. so if we can stay where we are and do mm -hmm. it temporarily safely then mm -hmm. we would be in favor of that and do whatever we could to help Mr. Larrabee, do you have any reservations about having them on? There's no, there's no, no. I, I think it would be really I think, good. I think to get this fixed is going to take a group effort. Yep. It's mm -hmm. really going to take a lot of, a lot of numbers. I tend to agree. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lindsay. So FEMA has all the documentation in terms of photos mm -hmm. and oh, uh, long coordinates for the rail trail and the damages there. I've asked FEMA today to have someone on site for a site visit in the next week or so okay. real trip. you know just to get this along because mm -hmm. you know I get all the emails and it's almost like paralysis by over analysis you have people doing separate mm -hmm. things different trying to work to the same end but you know there are just so many estimates out there flying around so okay. what I need in the next week and a half is an estimate for temporary work, which would be category B work, just to get the trail open. Okay. Anything for a temporary fix, you know, that can happen. You know, I can just put in a, a swag in this damage inventory, you know, just an outrageous number, because it's just an estimate. But for the temporary fix, I'd like to get a handle on it, like plus or minus 10% or something like that, mm -hmm. and send it into that. Mm -hmm. Would you take something by Friday? Is that Friday? Yeah. Is well, that soon enough? Whatever you no? can get it. We have, mm -hmm. you know, it's, we're doing okay, and I can get to that once you know, my part of the presentation gets going. But, uh, you know, the sooner the better. Okay. You know, because, and I can, I'll get to that. But anyhow. FEMA's aware of it. Mm -hmm. FEMA has all the photos. They have the lab okay. coordinates. Mm -hmm. And all I have to do is get some information and documentation to do temporary work and then submit a document for the permanent work. Temporary work has to be completed six months, within six months after the declaration. So the declaration was July 14th, I believe. Yeah. So the temporary work has to be completed six months within that six month time frame. Mm -hmm. Then any permanent work, you get 18 months to fix that. Mm -hmm. So we have time for the permanent work, certainly, but snow's coming really quickly. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, if you can get whomever's going to fix it out there to fix it, that'd be great. Well, I think we'll learn a lot more on Thursday. Right, you know, that's what I'm saying. I, I don't. But once you get you approach the landslide from this end, you still can't see the other areas that are you know just like big trenches on the side that need to be filled in. Right. So um, have well, to cope and there's from her. Culvert. There's a four foot culvert that is collapsed. It's completely collapsed. Which in is the landslide area. You know, on the Woodbury it's side. On the Woodbury yeah. side. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, but I mean that there's a couple of areas there that are easy fixed. I mean mm -hmm. that I could do mm -hmm. town equipment without mm -hmm. any problem. It's the landslide that I don't mm -hmm. dare to touch yeah. with our own equipment, and mm -hmm. giving the time that we have, um, mm -hmm. unless the engineers come up with another idea, um, which is very possible. Another one that was mm -hmm. brought to me, maybe we can jackhammer some of that ledge out to make an area for a temporary mm -hmm. fix um, to get snow machines through and get mm -hmm. it safe. That would be a temporary thing, but that would be an excavator with a jackhammer to mm -hmm. kind of smash it out and then just, it's easy to get rid of it. You throw it down over, down over, over the, the slot. Bank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one idea that comes to mind that would be fast, fairly fast, and mm -hmm. relatively inexpensive. I don't know how much How do you space. get at it, though? I mean, no. You 
would just walk the excavator down the trail. Yeah, and, and then and reach over. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. you, no, you've got room. There's, yeah. there's, just, there's still space there. There's mm -hmm. still a little bit of space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as you as you peck away at the at the ledge, it would mm -hmm. gain more mm -hmm. more space. Mm -hmm. I know. I, it's, yeah, it's it's a situation, mm -hmm. but it's, you know, I think we've got to come up with solutions for it. Yeah. Steve, yes, sir. Obviously, our interest is our interest is for snowmobiles, but I would like to encourage the town to continue to approach this as a multi-use trail. Mm. That not only in the winter time do snowmobiles use it, but there are a lot of other people that use it in the winter time as well. Mm. And so I think for, for public relations and et cetera, we should continue to mention that it is a multi-use trail. And as Alfie says, we'd like to get room enough for snowmobiles to get through, but there's others who are going to want to get through there this winter. That need more room? No, no, but hikers. That would be no, the so it would, no would be in our best no, interest to four by four continue to mention the use by others okay. so that in yeah. case you're mm -hmm. trying to justify mm -hmm. your temporary work, it's more than just for some of Robin has a question. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Turkey. If you're up there with the excavator doing that jackhammer, do you have to worry about additional landslides? <laughs> Absolutely. It's completely unstable. Absolutely. It's still shifting. The stakes, wow, I, the stakes I put in, in in July have shifted almost six meters. Whoa, Somebody wow. mentioned dynamite. And nope. You put dynamite up there. Oh, it's, gosh. No. It's mm -hmm. No. It's, you whole can't. Whole it's not. It's not mass blasting is not an option. Mm -hmm. Period. Especially in that kind of ledge. It's un, totally unpredictable. It's too cleaved. Yeah. It won't. No. No. Yeah. So thought. there's there's yeah there's all kinds of risks. This mm -hmm. is this is a really touchy site, and that's why I don't want know, to work on it until really do it yeah. without engineers looking at it and coming mm -hmm. up with a really safe mm -hmm. plan. Um, I, I I've done a lot of this stuff. I I'm not afraid. I'm mm -hmm. not you know, but this one is definitely something. It's that, fundamentally unstable. Yeah. It needs, and it's needs fun, it's looked. unstable upslope and downslope. Mm. So the insurance that we have, if something happened out there, do we have enough coverage to cover that? Yes. And my recollection is yes. Okay. When is it like a hundred thousand dollars <laughs> per incident? I, I think yeah, like I think that? it's like one ten or something like that per incident. <laughs> uh, but nothing's gonna happen. It's all gonna mm. be smooth. Okay. And smooth okay. Easy going. Okay, Alfie said. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you think? But no, we'll let the engineers sort of decide, and, and they 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 know this stuff, so mm. we got we got to rely on on their mm -hmm. their knowledge, their abilities, their thoughts. Yep. Mm. And I'm in. I'm all I'm happy to help and work and do what we need, we need to do. Like I said, the three there's three others. I think there's three other sites before you get to the major slide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those I can fix. Those are a piece yep. of cake for me. Um, are they just going to be gravel, or are you going to bring in some rocks? And well, one of them's a culvert. The culvert's yeah. crushed, oh, okay. so we have to replace the culvert. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is a, there's there's another a small culvert which is just plugged up. Mm -hmm. you might have to dig it out, clean it. Might as well put a bigger one mm -hmm. in if we're going. Mm -hmm. It's all that's all easy stuff, and there's one other one that is a, a smaller slide. It's a mm -hmm. yeah, it's a slide, mm -hmm. but and it's it's not on state. It's on a different. It's, right. it's the angle of repose is totally different. Right. It's mm -hmm. much more it's stable. It's actually an upslope slide, just a short ways from there. So you mm -hmm. could take it from there and put and it shift here, it. and it'd yeah. be simple. Mm -hmm. But the big slide is the one that is the one we're looking at with the engineers. Yep. Good. So, so, Mr. Lindsay, that's why I was saying. Oh, I'm sorry. That's why I was saying. If we can wait until Friday, if we can get you something by Friday, at least we have something that's at least moderately informed. Yeah. Yeah. Because to done. shoot from to shoot from the hip is just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. Yeah. Uh, well, and I don't want you doing it three or four times when we can do it once. You Please. Might be able to get a temporary cost estimate for Friday. Yeah, that's, that's, that's and that's all we're talking about. It's yeah. just the temporary. Yeah, but November second yeah. is his deadline. So. Yep. Yeah, he asked for it. By, Sometime he this asked week. for something this week, oh. which well, I think it, is it's reasonable. Possible, you know, next week too. You know, now that I have some help and some expert help, mm -hmm. you know, it's going, you know, That's much true. faster. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. But that wasn't. Yep, I know. Question. My question is, mm -hmm. Diana, did you ever send me the full 
lease agreement with Swenson's. I it's have, only four pages. I have article I have Article Eight operating costs, which compels us to, you know, pay for the cost of maintenance and repair mm -hmm. of the rail trail. Mm -hmm. Did you ever send me the entire lease digitally? Well, I, I wouldn't have had, wouldn't have it digitally, but it would would have been have to be well, scanned. Okay. I thought I, I did. That. Is that the lease? I'm going to do the power outage Saturday night. Skip's doing that tomorrow morning. Skip. M. <laughs> Here, just, have, just take this. Watch out for the staples. I don't want to send him the whole, the whole, this other thing here. Um, what's the whole other thing? It says it's a management plan for the, for the trail system. I don't see any reason why he can't have that. Is it well, management because plan it, include repairs? It, because it could, might be a little confusing. The lease is clear. Well, you can have the whole thing, then you decide, okay? Just one warning is don't give them something that's confusing if we have something that's clear. Okay. Theme is confusing. <laughs> what? FEMA itself is confusing. Yeah, so. really. Yeah, don't want to give them too, get them too much. <coughs> More than me. Uh, this is exactly what they need. So. Hmm. I thought for sure I had given you that a long time ago. Oh uh, well. You gave me part eight. All right, Mr. Larry, anything else you want to bring up? Uh, yes. Uh, well, on the agenda, there's. Work on class four road. Yep. I think did you guys already talk about that one? We Oh this was about the Chuck called me about work on the road that the Smiths and the Eyes live on. And I guess they've been doing that work on their own dime. And Chuck wanted to know if they could have a culvert. Uh, two culverts, I think, is what was They want saying. two culverts? Two, two lengths, 20 foot feet. Yeah. 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 Okay. One culvert was put in, but it's not enough to handle the water coming down the road when it rains. So, so that's a road that um, the town has worked on in the past, right? Well, yeah, the town put in the, the first one. We culvert. put in the culvert. Yeah, yeah. And, so that yeah. qualifies for, you know, the fact that we've worked There's on There's a legacy of, of work on that Some road. Some history for working on the road. And it's in, and it's in the orange book that yeah. we provide culverts, culverts. For, dra for drainage yeah. on classical yeah. roads. So if they're so already doing the work. If they're doing the work, the town's getting the bonus. All we have to do is supply the culverts. I think it's okay. Good. That's a good idea. Good. And uh, do you have one that they can just pick up or something? Or uh, they have I to go buy so. one? No, there's. I think there's some in our stock. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So should I have Chuck call you or? Um, sure. Or I can facilitate it. Okay. I can, That'd be yeah. fine. I, I would like to go look at it myself, okay. actually. Oh, okay. I'll just come up and look at the road and see what... That's a good idea, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm sure Chuck is capable of it. Yeah, but, yeah. but know, if they're already doing it, yeah. rather than putting it on your list of things to do. It'd be nice if you reviewed it, though. Yeah, yeah. that'd be good. Yeah. Since it, it is our, our, our long-term responsibility. Right. Skip. Skip. So who's paying for that? Is the, are the homeowners paying for? Right now, the homeowners are doing the effort. Yeah. Okay. So should the town reimburse them for the money they have expended? And they Since asked. we're doing something to Old Quarry Road, there's a legacy of work we can apply to. F I mean, it's one of those asked. other cases where we can ask FEMA for it because there is a history of work and it's in the orange book. Right. So again, I will need you know cost of material, cost of labor. You know. Pretty simple. So if they want yeah, to do that, Brandy, he's saying that if 
I saying. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think she, she figured that one out. So yeah, that would fine. be that would just be a contract. Chuck will be would be in the seat of a contractor, and he writes right. an invoice right. with with the cost with the cost of, of the work and material. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And yeah. that you can give me the, the cost of the uh, culvert of the culverts, right? Even though it's in stock, we still should be reimbursed for in right. stock. Right. Certainly, we can right. find an invoice for those culverts. Yeah. Or FEMA has. The cost for culvert, and there's an equipment spec that's about 137 pages long, and they have a cost for 20 foot, 40 foot culverts of different dimensions, dimensions. and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. If you don't have it, oh. I'm sure we do. Oh. We have to, because we have to, have to deal with it. As soon as I can get those. Yeah. Mm. Okay, one more item. Yes, please. Um, the the new truck mm -hmm. that we have ordered mm -hmm. is in. In where? It's it's at Charlie Boys. Really? It's just Ooh, a cabin the chassis. Camera? There's no oh. tools on it yet, um, but it's here. Mm -hmm. And so the question comes up <laughs> about the warranty. There's a warranty which I totally recommend. Putting on, mm -hmm. and the cost of that warranty is sixteen thousand four fifty six, and it's a six month, hundred thousand mile, six year, hopefully. Uh, six months. Sixty. Sixty months. Sorry. Sixty months. Sixty months. Okay. Six months wouldn't be very <laughs> satisfactory. That would be very satisfactory. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thousand dollars a month. Um, so. I talked with Greg, and he says that it was the warranty was approved in the original quote mm -hmm. when the decision to buy the truck was made. Mm -hmm. That's my recollection. But I just wanted to double check, verify, and make sure that uh, that is the case before I agree to the warranty. The extra 16. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do we have those records? So there's two separate, they're billing it separately, two invoices, correct? Yes, he quoted it separately, just for easy, easy numbers. So the amount of the truck adding on to that lease, do you have a total or no? I don't, but they're both in front of me. I got the, I got the, uh, the lease, uh, the, the warranty is 16.5, call it, and mm -hmm. the cost of the truck is 157. But is include it was included in that. I'm, 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 we can well, look back at the minutes, but I'm, but yeah, I'm really positive that we agreed that the warranty should be included. Yeah, so too. Right. Yeah. I, don't I mean, it. we can check the minutes, but I don't I'm, remember I'm, talking about it. I have, still I have, end up just cutting one check. For I, I have, all of it. But right. They would yeah. include. That's right. It yeah. With that price, on, it would all be on one. Mm -hmm. He just gave me this so that I could get a decision. Oh, yep. Mm -hmm. And then after I got this, I talked to Greg, and he's like, "Yep, that was definitely approved mm -hmm. by the select board." I'm, I have high confidence that, that we agreed mm -hmm. to that. So I can go back to the dealer and say, "Yep, mm -hmm. give me one invoice with including, including the, mm -hmm. the, the sixteen month warranty." Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and then we can move forward with that. Great. Uh, the body people are not ready for the truck yet, <coughs> unfortunately. They give us a time frame at all, or not really? Uh, they didn't really give me a time frame. They they've been saying all along, as soon as it's here, we'll get it in, we'll do it. But mm -hmm. now that it's here, they're saying mm -hmm. that they're up that never backed up. But uh, I'm gonna push for that. I'm gonna keep pushing on that to get it in. It takes about a month to put it together. Okay. If they stay, you know, they keep right on. Mm -hmm. So and if they've got the material, which they should have, they've signed a quote. We have a contract with them. Mm -hmm. They should have purchased the equipment to put on our truck. Mm -hmm. So I will, really? I will fight for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll push push on that because we need that truck. Um, so I think that's all I've got. We've been putting up winter sand in between fixing washouts and doing our top grade on the, on the flooding events. And it won't be long, another week or so, I'm going to start putting plow fronts on and getting ready for the next. How about replenishing your gravel stockpile? 
Yeah, I'm uh, still working on that too. Mm -hmm. But I mean, now that we're, I think we're pretty much done with the top coat of mm -hmm. our flooding. Mm -hmm. So now I can focus on the sand pile, mm -hmm. which I think we're about 1,500 yards, which is halfway through mm -hmm. uh, what we are allotted to buy this year. Um, and once that's done, then I can go to the, the stockpiles of gravel. Do you want to authority to hire other trucks? Um, we chatted about this briefly because there was <clears throat> something on Front Porch Forum that Alfie thought because somebody complained that he couldn't hire other trucks to do hauling if he needs it. So I thought he might like to be authorized if he needs to do that. To, to contract it. it. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, I mean, I think I have that authority anyways. It's okay. in the budget. It's in the budget. Yeah, hired, okay. So I think I do. I just don't, I didn't like that comment that somebody made, <laughs> no. which was un wasn't even true. There's no truth yeah. to There's it. no basis for right. it. There's no, you know, yeah. so I didn't go anywhere with it. I didn't even mm -hmm. respond to it because mm -hmm. it, it's not, it's not true. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think that it's, we're getting down to the wire and it might be wise to hire at least one truck to help out because mm -hmm. our truck, the one I just mentioned, the one that this truck is replacing is getting really tired. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's, we need to baby that truck. Still using it every day, it's still going, but it's, you know, I don't want to have to put a bunch of money into it and then and have a truck sitting there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, Especially yeah. if you have to start plowing with it. Yes, which I, it's looking that way. Mm. I mean, it's, I'm going to get it ready to plow, mm. uh, anticipating this truck, the new truck not mm -hmm. coming mm -hmm. and ready to work. So, yeah, I think it might be good to hire a truck at this point just to bring it, you know, maybe I can put the, that rent or uh, the lease truck onto the gravel stockpiles. Right. Mm -hmm. And then they can be bringing it and we can just push it up with a loader and one of us can be there. Mm -hmm. Uh, to kind of get that, um, caught, just to get caught up, caught up with that. Yep. I mean, thus far we've done everything with our own equipment. I everything, know. everything yeah. for this flood has been done with our own equipment. We've not hired any contractors. We've not hired any trucks. So. Just that one loader, I mean, the excavator. We, we, rent, right, we rented, rented it, that, but, but it was still, still our, it was still yeah, our work. Are you still, still doing it all yourself, so, right? No contractors, nothing. Uh, I think we should be proud of that. Yeah, really. You know, other towns are paying a lot of money mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. labor and machines. Mm -hmm. uh, so if there's no other questions about roads, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> okay. Great. Thank you for all the work. The, uh, Steve, Steve, please go ahead. Uh, are you folks done with it? Well, I wanted to touch back on the, the idea of having a, a meeting um, with well, you folks and the Hardwick folks and that's you. Up, and that's up to you folks. So you would be all. interested. Let me I'm just have your here. phone number. 456-8862. Uh, 8862? Yes, and just leave a message if I don't answer. Okay. But then, Thursday, 8 a.m., Buck Lake Intersection. Yes, I'll be there. Sounds good. Okay. Great. Thank you for thank you thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. I think we've pretty much covered status of other flood repair projects. Well, pretty much. we haven't talked about parks. That's the only thing I haven't talked about. We have dealt with town hall. That's the colonial quote. We can talk we've about dealt with rail trail. Um, Diana, did you have something about parks that you wanted to bring up specifically? Well, I asked um, I asked Russell Richardson to give us an estimate of what it would cost to reclaim. The park that got trashed with with uh, rocks, and I was thinking that the last meeting I was thinking maybe after V Trans gets done with all that, they would make it all nice. But you know, I can't really rely on that. Well, what it's going to look like in the spring, we're probably still going to need some topsoil. We're going to need our uh, you know our landscaping replaced. Mm -hmm. And so I asked him to give us an estimate of what that would cost. I think that's premature. But because well, we have to get something in for the for the. Well, it's going to change dimension entirely when they do the siding there for the, all the repairs on fourteen. Mm -hmm. It's going to be, it's going to look entirely different mm -hmm. by the time it's all said and done. Mm -hmm. So, 
we could, I mean, I guess it's okay to put it in an estimate, but it's going to, it's going to have very little basis yeah. in reality after yeah, they're done maybe. with that. Yeah. Well, so I understand, I, understand that there, I understand that there's a rush to do this, yeah. but I mean, it, I, I, but at the same time, it, I just don't, I don't feel like it's really. The way FEMA operates. But in order to have, have it be a project. Excuse me. I'm you, sorry. You really did have something to say. Skip, please go ahead. The way FEMA operates is, these are the, on this damage inventory. Case, yes. There's a percentage of work complete. Mm -hmm. So it can be anywhere between zero and 100%. Mm -hmm. Okay. They'll act on anything in terms of reimbursement for anything that's 95% complete or above. So, and again, this is just an estimate. Mm -hmm. So if you give an estimate for what you believe the repair would be for a temporary repair, I can put it in and put 0% complete. And they won't act on it, you know, but it's a placeholder. It's a definitely. That's exactly what I was going to say. Mm. Okay. Then, but that's then the final piece would be hopefully a better estimate because once you get all your work done, mm -hmm. and you cover it in and all that stuff, you should have a, a handle on how much that cost would be, mm -hmm. know, like a firm mm -hmm. estimate, and it would be instead of B, which would be a temporary repair, it would be C permanent repair. C and, category C. Yeah. And so, you know, it's doable. Okay. Again, just need info. All right. But that well, project would also involve, what did you spend, two days over there scraping up those rocks? Yes. Yeah, at least two days. So all those hours on the excavator would be a part of that same project. Yeah. So. And I have some I pictures, but I can't get to seem to figure out how to send them. Well. <laughs> I'm sure Alfie noted that on his timesheet that he spent two hours on the excavator. Two days. <laughs> <laughs> two I did, days. Actually, yeah, it's written on my calendar. Whatever day it was. So on the calendar, the calendar, don't lose that calendar. No. <laughs> Please, you can't lose that calendar. <laughs> and then he took it all up to... Yeah, so it's, if it's right now, if it's just labor, that's fine. I mean, okay. You know, and, you know, we have all their loaded labor rates, so it's easy to plug in. Okay. But the, but the, don't you want the estimates for the total project, even though they're just estimates? Not quite yet. Really? Right. Okay. Because the temporary work, you know, from July 14, six months, so I think, don't know what that date is. Yeah. And the, t the permanent is 18 months from July 14th. From July 14th. I don't know what that date is. So what you submit on, on November 2nd is not going to be our total m amount of money we'll ever get. No. It's an be estimated more. cost because it'll be, say for Alfie's work, there may be 5% done. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they will not act on anything, you know, below 95%. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's doable. I just need... Need information? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So do you want me to encapsulate this in a... I'll email all the information I need and send it to you. I'd love that. <laughs> Pardon? I would love that. I have a pretty good sense of it, but no. if you want to make it very clear. Crystal. Could you make a chart? <laughs> <laughs> a Gantt well, chart? I was going to talk, okay. talk about a chart. Okay. I was mean, created. With an Excel sheet of pen. No, this is something I don't work in. Yeah. Anyhow, that's part of it. Mm. I'll stop. I would take advantage of it, but don't prioritize that. You have other mm -hmm. things to do. I can. Mm -hmm. I have a pretty good handle on this since I've gone through it. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's an individual. And then just briefly on the town hall, um, Lizzie looked at it and she didn't see anything wrong. I looked at it and I was quite alarmed. What did you see? The amount of of uh, big trenches along the edges that probably should be cleaned out and filled in. It's probably not a huge deal, but I did ask uh, Jan Lewandowski to take a look when he's in the area. It's not gonna cost us anything, I don't think, it's because that's what he does. Uh, he's our historic buildings. Um, it might not be a good idea to put any more dirt in there because you don't want the dirt to get too close to the bottom. <laughs> Right. Of the building. <laughs> what trenches are you talking about, Diana? Huh? What trenches are you talking about? I went down there and I, I crawled all the way under and there's like 
No, underneath is fine. It's just yeah. all around the edges where, you know, it used to... There's Would the like, eaves drip? No, it was more than that. that. I didn't notice any trenches, but was I was also that. more focused yeah. on what was actually yeah. under the building. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah, right between the vegetation and the where the vegetation used to be, there was kind of a trench there. Did not so notice. maybe it just, maybe it's not that big a deal to clean it out and start over there, but... Anyways, I don't think probably, probably it's not a, enough to be a FEMA project. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Lindsay, could we have the recovery officer's report, please? Okay. So, today we were supposed to participate in a conference call with FEMA. And they sent an email last week confirming that the conference call was going to be held today at 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. So Danielle Rivalara and myself showed up at the town offices and got all our stuff ready to go, all our questions. Mm -hmm. No call from them. Mm -hmm. So, and they had confirmed, and we had sent an email back confirming, confirming the confirmation. You know, that it's either a conference call, mm -hmm. we'd love to meet in person, you know, whatever you guys can do. So, no conference call, so there it is. try. It's my buddy. It was a mouse. Sorry, I get distracted. <laughs> I, that was a mouse? Yeah. yeah. His name is Chester. Chester. <laughs> I bet. So, okay. so I, I called with our little Your project leader, leader. Who came She wasn't taking any phone calls today. Okay. And oh. sent her an email uh, wondering what's, uh, what's, the what's deal? going on. And I sent yet another email saying, sorry, we missed you today. Here are the questions we were going to pose to you. Please write back with the answers. And so today is a federal holiday, which she must have been unaware of until Sunday night or something like that. I don't know. But anyhow, the call never happened, regrettably. And you haven't had any contact since? Uh, last contact with her was on September 27th. Ooh. It was like a week ago. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so we yeah. you know, we've been in contact and... Uh, no, I'm sorry. I, the question is, from this, there's been no follow-up. Today. From this, this, from yeah, this there's back. no follow-up. She, no one has gotten back to no. you. Okay. Still that was, that was... No. Still all day. Still all day. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So anyhow, the questions, the questions I, I wanted her to answer, like, right away, any update from Lenny? Nebraska Lenny about the Wilbur Road landslide and the two bridges, the bridges. Ways and the others. Because he was on the site visit mm -hmm. September 7th right. with, with the road commissioner, mm -hmm. and there's been nothing from Lenny. Mm -hmm. And I've been asking Michelle, you know, where's Lenny? We need his notes, we need, you know. His follow up. Yeah, so, you know, nothing on that. And I also sent a question, how quickly can a site inspector be in Woodbury to get the rail trail? You know, because I think it's, it, it's very important that FEMA see the magnitude of, of the destruction there. Mm. And, well, they have all the pictures. They've had the pictures for a long time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so. And then there was another question that you guys may not you know, be aware of when do we complete these forms? There are forced labor summaries, which captures all the labor that Alfie and his crew have been going through. Force account equipment summary, that's to quantify how many hours we use for the greater motor trucks truck. and excavator, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. And the project worksheet. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping she'll uh, get back to me on that. <laughs> So that's mm -hmm. our FEMA update. Now select board questions or report. Waiting for a proposal from Lafayette Highway Specialties, who is the installer for the radar mm -hmm. side. The radar. Okay. Yeah. Once I have that, I'll move forward and make other damage inventory. Send that information to you folks to us. so right. you can authorize the purchase of that and get that going. Okay. And uh, right now the sign, including a solar panel, is $3,600. And 
don't know what the install cost is going to be. We we'll probably have a record of what it was before. I, I do. Oh, okay. And I sent the, this gentleman, uh, what's his name? last name, Ford, you know, his proposal that he did in 2018 to install the floor. Mm -hmm. It was like $1,500 per sign, which included an ADA flagger. Oh, I see. So it's going to be so a... You included a what? A flagger. A flagger. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So what the select board or the road commission will have to do once these signs are in is get a permit to work on Route 14. Yes. Right. Even though the actual the to post get, is still there and they don't have to do any digging or anything? Well, well you still... No. Well, it's, we're in state. We're in state. Yeah. yeah. You have to get a permit. Okay. How long does that process take, getting a permit? Like, does it have to be done way early in the game, or...? Well, it's fairly quickly. It's, yeah. it's just, it's a form you fill out, and then it gets approved. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I used to know the person up in seven, but now we're in six. We're in so six we now. And yeah. And that and those people have turned over pretty yeah. rapidly. Oh, they do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I keep losing contacts there, left and right. <laughs> yeah. So... When when will that when will they come in? When will the new the new signs come in? Good question. I don't know. Fair enough. So these the, these, the signs themselves are in stock. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. But what has to happen is that they have to be programmed. Mm -hmm. So I told them to program it for sixty miles an hour. No. <laughs> That's why you got the stare. That I'm just going to continue to stare at you. Uh, so let's get so, so 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 to the frame this out. That sign anyhow. Like, uh, I know. Get it down to I, 40 miles. Yeah, mm -hmm. the same. 40 miles away, yeah. So. And it has to be programmed, and we're getting the uh, option that can capture all the data in it. So mm -hmm. we want to know, like the other. The other ones have, have that, yeah. Mm -hmm. We already have that. So mm -hmm. why not keep it, keep it up? Same mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. I don't see any reason. I, I don't see any reason not to use it as a logger. You no. guys don't use that. I said I don't see any reason not to oh, not have to. that okay. logging option. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's. It, I think it's useful data. It so, do you want something from us right now? No. Oh. Until I get the entire package, then okay. I'll send it to you. Thank you. Oh, he's in the bathroom right now. <laughs> 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 How's it going to spray? She's popping out. <laughs> 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 So good news, uh, Danielle Rivalara started, mm -hmm. started work, and uh, she's an expert mm -hmm. at Excel spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. okay. And to the point where she may be talking about, you know, uh, forms and all that stuff, how, how do we know where we are? I don't think so, I was, but... Yeah, well, <laughs> so she created something in Google Docs. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anyone works in Google Docs. Mm -hmm. I rarely have. So she made this form that categorizes the roads, rail trail. Randy, I'll have to get your road name to add this to the list. And it just goes, and it's like a checkoff list. You know, do we have a lot long for it? Do we have a damage description? Do we have photos? Do we have material costs? Do we have equipment costs? Do we have labor? Is the worksheet complete? Is the damage inventory complete? Date submitted, was it accepted, and uploaded to the portal. Wow. I mean, this is pretty handy. It's very handy. Yeah. And it's in Google Docs. So it's shareable. So it's shareable. Mm. If you guys would like a link to it, please. Mm. I can get you a link to it. And this will be you know, a dynamic document and filled out as, mm. as we complete these. Right. So the good news mm. is, is that we worked on Dog Pond Road, Chartier Hill Road, King Pond Road, four washouts on County Road, mm -hmm. two on Cabot Road, Lake Hill Road is done, Wilbur Road is done except for the uh, washout, or the Land, landslide. landslide. Okay. So that being said, FEMA is now working on uh, $30,000 that we've submitted so far. Okay. That's been uploaded into the portal, mm. and that's just for Wilbur Road and Blake Hill Road. Mm -hmm. oh. So we, we, Alfie and I, and Danielle met last week, and County Road, it's going to be a, a lot. lot. Yeah. Mm. And Cabot Road, maybe not so much, but 
still significant. So, you know, thirty thousand dollars for Blake Hill Road and Wilbur Road. I can imagine that, you know, in the next week or so, we'll have submitted close to a hundred thousand mm. dollars to no. payment. Mm. That'd be nice. That would get us, you know, yeah. So a little more than halfway there, since we're at one ninety. What? One ninety-two right now. Mm. That number doesn't include labor. Right. There's no labor. Labor's not even in there. Labor's not in there. Oh, really? Oh, so the sub sub middle of all that info. Wilbur Road and... That does include labor. It does include that labor. Does. Correct. Oh, okay. These okay. numbers, but the, these yeah. numbers, the, number. the 192 does oh, not okay, include okay. labor. Okay, okay. I see. I see. Yeah. So, upcoming work, uh, we'll continue to work on damage inventories for the roads. And... Uh, with with a lot of help that Danielle is, is giving to us, you know, it's, it's so much more quicker, which is good. She has more patience than I do with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah, we're moving along, and I don't I see you like me. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not so much. Okay, <laughs> so you know, there's, there's no reason not to think that we won't get this done by November second. We should okay. be fine. But I, for that other stuff here, the parks and Carol Gray and stuff like that, I'm going to need help. Yeah, you need information from Brandy Smith's road. Brandy, what's your road? I what couldn't remember that on? either. The bottom is Old Cabot Road. Is that where you're doing it? That's the stretch that the culverts are going in. Okay, old so Cabot Road. Old Cabot, old Cabot Road. Okay. Old Cabot Road. So it's right at the bottom. I should turn off Cabot Road up the hill. Mm -hmm. so I, can, I can do an X Y coordinate for that. Mm. Pretty simple. So I've asked. FEMA to reschedule that meeting. Yeah. And I'm on vacation starting tomorrow. Again? Yes. <laughs> Good. I'm sure you need. Is that somewhere exciting? Yes. Good. Going all the way to Portland, Maine. Ooh. Nice. For the rest of the well, yeah. you'll be back. Good yeah, I'll be back. So anyhow, <laughs> I've requested it for next Tuesday, a week from week from tomorrow. Week from tomorrow. Uh -huh. I requested an in-person meeting. Ah. Instead of over the phone, they don't do Zoom. They really? don't do uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh. It's either a conference call uh. or in person. In person, it's crazy. Where does she come from? Where did this team originate? Boston She's or from the Bahamas? Really? She's living. I mean, she's living ever. here somewhere. Yeah. She's I think down in, in Vermont? down in central Vermont. I think. In but. Boston. Yeah. In oh, Boston. oh, okay. We're all up in Lewiston. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right, what else? So, also, I asked FEMA, you know, for our, all our volunteer labor, you know, just mm -hmm. people who showed up at the town offices, what I can charge for that. And they wrote back $28.15. Mm -hmm. So that'll be uploaded Great. into that. And that, mm -hmm. those funds can be utilized to, to offset any monies above and beyond the 75%. So FEMA will give us 75% and then they'll tack on this volunteer time. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. To help with you know the extra 25%. Mm -hmm. Does it matter what age the volunteers were? How hard to it's just a pupil. It's a head count, isn't it? Well, they, they didn't ask for social yeah. security yeah. numbers. <laughs> Do you believe that the well, older well, people sure. aren't worth well, 28 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit confused about that issue. Um, you're looking at the Schedule Z stuff. Schedule A. Oh, so, what? so some of the volunteers are going to be as Schedule A and some right. it's administrative volunteers right. are Schedule Z. Right. Oh. Okay, and that falls through for everything. Right, yeah. correct. Okay. Uh. Mm -hmm. You clarify that. Recovery policy. I can send you this. Okay. Well, I'm all set. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. 
So, again, you know, we're well on our way to, you know, meet that November deadline. Uh, and any help you guys need, just let me know. I'm around if I'm not on vacation. Sounds good. <laughs> but I will be checking the emails. Okay. In the morning, briefly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're on vacation from? Yes. I'll be back in my office on Monday. So from we'll now, today. for tomorrow until Monday? Is that what you said? I didn't hear what you said. Oh. Starting tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Have fun. Enjoy. Uh, any other questions? I don't think there are any storms coming this week, so Maine should be nice. You can bring me back the lobster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Pack a cooler. All right. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Uh, can we have the emergency management director's report, please? Yeah, so um, first off, uh, on issues with, with Michelle and so on, have you, been, have you been in contact with Ben Rose at all about any of these issues? Well, this is the first one that came up. Yeah, he's, no, a very, he's a real good person that uh, yeah. he's stationed out there with Melissa and with the rest of them. He's uh, the, the oh. Vermont liaison with mm -hmm. that, so mm -hmm. any issues, uh, he, he's a good facilitator to make sure that things work right. And so, I'm going to throw that Thank out. you. spoken with him before. Um, so, um, another point that Andrew what was just mentioned is um, the, the uh, it's been on the news now as well, the, the potential that we're going to be getting 90% FEMA money and not 75. And then the, the state piece goes, set at 12 and a half, goes to 5%, so it'll be 90, 95% exactly. How that happens is uh, maybe a little convoluted. I think the, the president has to declare that we met the threshold to get 90%. Oh, so, um, well, that has happened. So, the, yeah, no, that was on the news last week. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, I mentioned to you at that previous meeting yeah. that that was likely to take mm -hmm. place, and mm -hmm. it has it met the threshold. Um, the, exactly the mechanism that happens from here forward to get to the, the clear statement about mm -hmm. getting the, the total 95% reimbursement for Woodbury. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure, but it, maybe it's a good question for Ben Rose that he, he would know mm -hmm. something like that. Um, he's the one who told me about it in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so might want to clarify that, which you know, puts a different view on some getting some of this work done, but not having to come up with that 82 and a half, mm. 87 and a half. Yeah, really, yeah. yeah. especially on that rail trail. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So wanted to throw that out there. Um, <clears throat> so a couple things. Um, last time I got you the estimate from Radio North for 3000 973 dollars to get the uh, mm. antenna installed here um, and the question came up about whether, whether to get another estimate from Burlington Communications because uh, Radio North was several months out to getting the work done there they're way overloaded and they're short two techs so um, the in the meantime you know I, know I spoke with Alfie about uh, the work on the town radios and he had someone that he uses for that and I thought oh I get a price from him and um and he was supposed to come like uh, you know last week but it didn't quite happen so I guess and he hasn't returned my call yet so I don't really have mm -hmm. another estimate further on that but I think it's uh you know it's one of those things that we do need and um <clears throat> I think it's important to get it done so the Burlington one d didn't is that the one uh, when I talked to them, they said they'd be two weeks out. Yeah. I and didn't get a price yet because I was waiting on talking, talking to this local person about Oh, this other one. Oh, okay. Uh, what was the name? Is that Burlington Communication? Yeah. So. Yeah, and of course, it's good to have, I mean, it'd be good to have Radio North do because they're doing the fire department stuff. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, uh, but if Alfie's going to use them for the, the truck radios, it'd be good to keep you from the same people rather than mm -hmm. getting third party and so mm -hmm. um, we'll, we'll see how that plays out before yeah I, I don't really have a preference I mean this my guy is not really showing uh, I think that they're, they've all got problems I, I think everybody's very busy and, and yeah. you know uh, mm -hmm. 
but I'm just saying I'm not against going with somebody that can commit. Okay. Sooner. We mm -hmm. Well, what does the board <clears throat> want to do if there's um, like a, you know, and some of this came up because we thought that there was a, a bidding requirement for the 3973 as a possibility, so we needed to get other estimates and so on. Um, I can get a, a second price from Burlington Communications. I can do that and you know, and see what they come up with and uh, do we have to wait another couple weeks for to bring back the select board or do you want to authorize up to a certain amount and go forward with it? How do you want to handle this? It's up to you guys. Well, mm -hmm. it's Greater North is in the neighborhood of 4K, right? 30, 30, you said $3,973? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that right? was a detailed but, estimate from Radio North. Okay. And who's also familiar with the fire department radio because they installed that one. Okay. So but they're several that. months away from yeah. doing anything. Mm. So, should, uh, should you get uh, in touch with Burlington Communications, not necessarily because of price, but of, because of timing? I, uh, I tend to understand that price is probably higher. Yeah. I like the fact that Radio North already is familiar with the area yeah. and familiar with the fire department. So do you want to just uh, go with them on this? And I, I, I tend to feel like we should just, the longer we wait, the longer that two yeah, month I delay mean, time we've is. We've already used up some of that time. So yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. they, said, they said two weeks ago, last before last meeting, right? So they should be... Yeah, but we didn't pull the trigger. We didn't commit, right. we didn't commit yeah. to it. So we'll, yeah. we'll be at so the end of the line again. It could be two weeks or it could be a week. No, I no, said... No, uh, Radio North was a, few, a couple of months. Months. Oh, oh, oh. Months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, but if that's what you want... Um, I think oh. if it's FEMA money, then we should just go with whoever can get here as soon as possible. Yeah, and this that's is, a a, this is out of mm -hmm. the emergency uh, program. Program. So that, uh, I, what, reimbursing 100% on emergency work? Is that right? It is. Yeah, so... It, yeah, so... I, I think we should go just go for it and get I the, believe get, I get the ball rolling. Copy of that estimate to the yep. board. Mm -hmm. last I've time. seen so it. You, you want to contact them and sign it or do whatever you want with it. I, I don't have authority to sign so anything. With the Radio North you're talking about? Yeah. Now we're not going for the quicker but more expensive one. Well, we don't have a quicker, more expensive. Well, board. the Burlington North one, the Burlington mm -hmm. Communications one that he has. Yeah, but we don't know what the, we don't know what the time frame is. It's not like they no, guaranteed they, it was going to be faster. We yeah. haven't. We haven't. They said it, well, when I talked to them, they said they're out a couple of weeks in this oh, 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 oh. as opposed to the radio office said they're mm -hmm. a couple months. And, well, you know, well, the longer we, well, we don't, we could agree to authorize up to a certain amount. Yeah, we could. Like Alpha pointed out that if it's FEMA money, you know. Mm. Yeah, but we and should still nickel and dime. <laughs> well, but if the estimate yeah. comes in a thousand dollars more, are, are we comfortable with that? A thousand more would be okay. Ten thousand uh, um, more, no. I don't know. Is there a, a deadline on time periods for emergency work, or at least to pull the trigger on emergency repair, like that, or six months? Yeah. So we're okay there. Um, yeah, it, it's. Whatever you want to do. So Norm, if we're if it's a couple months out, if we go with Radio North, I mean this is equipment that we've been going without already, right? So Forever. Um, so to me it seems like what's a couple more months? Except we know the price. This is an emergency. <laughs> Which we just, just had. Our and, yes. and it won't be. Didn't didn't have this yeah. capacity. Mm. I don't know. I like the fact that we already have a relationship with them, and the fire department has a relationship with them. Mm. I haven't heard awesome. bad stuff. Mm. That's positive for me. And the price doesn't seem unreasonable. So, um, other opinions? I would, t I would tend to make a motion to approve this, but John, please. If we were to request from Burlington Communications, would they have, they'd have to come out and do an estimate? I'm not or sure. I, I think uh, I would have to get the information in terms of what the, the fire department radio is and tell them I don't know if they have to come out to do an estimate or if they can, um, I can just give them the information and they can work one out. I'm not sure. Okay. Because mm -hmm. if they would have to come out, then you're probably looking at a couple of weeks before they come out. This is speculation, of course, but mm -hmm. and then after that, 
hard to say. So mm -hmm. yeah. it wouldn't be that much different in terms of timing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or it's all actually operational. Other thoughts? Mm -hmm. I'm tempted to pull the trigger on it I'm and get it. I'm in the agreement ball with you on that. Mm -hmm. Stand up. So, you wait. I think you made a motion to do. I'm about to. Oh, okay. yeah, we're still like having a discussion. Okay. <laughs> so I'll make a motion to approve a contract with Radio North for three thousand nine hundred seventy-eight dollars for our emergency management system. Second, anybody I'll, second? I will second your motion. And motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So norm the only an thing. Antenna, right? It's just the antenna. Yeah. Yeah. So Norma, I think what Was this ahead. antenna damaged during the flood? There isn't one. There isn't one. Well oh, there is not one. No. This is us finally moving into the nineteenth century. It's an upgrade. This is because the uh, we know that the emergency operations center is the fire station, which yes. is not currently in operation, or right. available for use and we need to have the emergency out the secondary one established. And I, um, and actually, again, it was Ben Rose that said that would qualify as an emergency repair to get that in place. I'll have to talk to Ben Rose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, Norm, what we would need is you to send, I guess, me that estimate. So yeah, well, you've got a copy. I, 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 have, I have that copy. Is that the most up to date thing that I have? Yeah, okay. That was, yeah, that was, okay. That was so, uh, so that means that I need to be I need to reach out to them and and, and get a and get a yeah because we we did an actual contract on an estimate. Skip, did you have a question? Can I have a copy of that? I don't the have estimate? I don't have one in front of me. Okay. All right, I can get you one. Okay. I'll forward you the email. So I'll, I'll get it to you. Okay. Is that fair enough? So I can start. Yep. Sounds great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And it's going on the fire station? It's going on here. Well, it's going here. It's on this the, is the secondary. This is the, the secondary the emergency. emergency operations center. Being at the so are you going to have a base station here? They would, uh, in the event of, of another flooding event, they would bring a radio from the fire station, plug it in here, and be able to use it. This would be the emergency operations center and not the fire station, which is the primary one. So is, are the Tom trucks tied into the same system? Is it a digital radio, like a trunk radio, so you can? Oh, sure. Yeah. OK. Oh, yeah, no. They um, yeah, would have all the same channels as the okay, fire yeah. department based radio. It would be the same radio. Right. Mm -hmm. And the Tom trucks can tie into that system? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. OK. Yes. Mm -hmm. OK. As in, same with the Tom clerk's office radio. So and the truck radio. Oh, that's another base. So you can, the, uh, you can talk to the fire department trucks? Uh, I think, yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah, just cool. switch the channel. Mm -hmm. I can talk to the town clerk on the radio. I can... I turned the radio off this morning when you were having the meeting. Well, that's why it was so quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get a hold of you. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought the crew, I thought the road crew was sleeping. <laughs> I thought they were on vacation because they weren't talking. Yeah, you shut yeah. it off. <laughs> Yeah. So, that's cool. so Norm, been, so you've been talking with these uh, Radio North people. Yeah. But you want to be the one to contact them to. She doesn't them? have authorization to. Actually no, but you could at contract. least tell them that we're to send us a contract. Or did we send them? No, no, I can't if you want to or whatever. That'd be great. Let's do that since you already have the contact information, and then we'll have something that we can actually sign because we can't sign an estimate. So then, yeah, right, but tell them that it's been approved and, and uh, they our, wouldn't get on their list. Our two weeks don't start until the contract's signed. Correct. So if that if we if he does it, and you don't get it until next week. Until it's, it's already approved. No, also, to, it's, it's already approved. All I have to do is have it and sign it. So as soon as he emails it to me, I got you. Mm -hmm. I sign it. Then our and, two week period starts. Yeah, there's a yeah. Yeah. Two, two months. Two months. months. So. Well, these are the two months, guys. Yeah. 
They decided to go with it. But who knows? You know, they say that. And <laughs> if they're going to be in the area for something. And, you know. So the new truck and the antenna might come the same time? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Or the new truck and bring it to Burlington. Yeah, right, right. Do you have a. Yeah. Get, if somebody drop a ladder on that truck, it would help. Yeah, that's right. Need yeah. a new uh, radio for the new truck? Is it I with one? will need a new radio, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. In fact, part of, part of, I don't know if this is going to be, if we're going to switch companies, then we might That's just an intent. Yeah. But, so they don't do service work? This company, that's part oh, of Oh, um, well, Radio North has been doing all the fire department stuff right along. Right. So is that company. It's the same company. So it's the same company. Right. So what I'm, what I'm saying is I'll probably switch to them to do our service work also. Because uh, our radios do not work. Our radios are absolutely terrible. Oh. In the excavator, in the grader, in the trucks, there they are absolutely terrible. And I don't know if it's to do with our antenna, mm -hmm. our repeater, <coughs> which is on the building at the quarry. Yep. Um, but my guy has not showed up. I talked to him a month ago, and mm -hmm. he was supposed to come and look at the antenna, at the repeater. Mm -hmm. I brought him up there and he said, yeah, I can see right now what the problem is, but, but he didn't do anything about it. a month and mm. he still hasn't come back. So I am okay with switching if, if this, this company is going to, we're going to hire the company to do the antenna, we might still start a relationship with them to do our service work. Also. Yeah, and they're already doing the fire And they're already doing the fire department. Yeah, so, right. so, yeah. That'd be so that's why work, I, yeah. it's like the more consistency we have, I think the better off we are. And mm -hmm. we'll get better service if we have basically everything mm -hmm. in one. Mm -hmm. They're behind the eight ball um, text, mm -hmm. but probably so is everyone else. You know, it's a the combination of the opera work and you know, opera money mm -hmm. and, and towns mm -hmm. looking to upgrade to radios, mm -hmm. as well as, you know, now all the flood issues and all mm -hmm. that work. Right. And they've gotten way too much work, mm -hmm. so yeah. mm -hmm. demand for their work. Mm -hmm. While on, on that subject, and, and yeah, there's a um, few things that really, in this scenario, that are higher priority than the communications. They, you know, in the veteran emergency, he needs to be able to talk to his people. So mm -hmm. this is really a high priority to get this done. Um, I agree. And um, if, if they stay, come on, out, I can, I've been talking with the, the guy from the state that does their radios. And actually, he came uh, to the fire station to see just what they needed because they could help out with some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I can. Um, but let's take it one step at a time. Let's. I'll, I'll get back to Radio North about this, and I'll see what they can do, and I'll also at the same time ask about what they can do on the town trucks and, and the repeater. Okay. I'm mm -hmm. afraid that I'll get the same kind of answer that there's a couple months out, but I mm -hmm. think. Um, you got to start somewhere. So let's, let's start. You know. I'll, I'll let your yeah. own John know what's going on. We'll help I'll, you I'll continue to push my guy too. I mean, maybe he can get our radios working. At least temporarily. Yeah. At mm -hmm. least for, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, sure. If he, you know, he, I, I think you know I don't need not to go back there. I, yes. And you've done it before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, while well, on that subject, um, an interesting thing came up that uh, I'm not sure this, how this plays out, but with. Um, we all know when we lose power, we wind up, um, at least during most incidents, still having phones. Um, but we lose we lose cable uh, ability right away. I'm on my cable and lose that right off. I'm not sure if it works the same with fiber, if they have um, uh, in the event of a power outage, mm -hmm. you also lose uh, fiber connectivity or not. Um, I don't. You want to. I don't, I don't have a frank answer. So. Because the school's on fiber. But, but the point that was made is um, in the event of difficulty with that kind of communication, you need to move documents back and forth and you don't have email availability, <sighs> having an old-fashioned fax machine helps. So, um, so some emergency operation centers also have the backup uh, mm -hmm. to be able to use off the phone lines to, to do, have fax availability. Mm -hmm. Something to keep in mind, I'm not, you know... Um, just one of those little details that hmm. when you need it, it comes in handy because if you got to get something signed to get back to someone, mm -hmm. you got to make something happen and you can't, you don't have the availability of the internet. Mm -hmm. and if, I brought this up at the time, but there's so many people who 
Um, I mean, if they only have a cell phone, there's nothing we can do for them. But there are also people who have uh, a landline, but it's attached to their phone and answering machine, and so when the power goes out, that's no good. So they have a whole, an old-fashioned phone on the wall, like you probably have and I have, that's good. <laughs> well, well, people might not, well, yeah, if you have a cell phone, then you have to go with it. There's nothing you can do. And there are places yeah. in town where you can get that. <coughs> During an might, emergency. But you may lose cell coverage as well. Right. So it, uh, right. But anyways. You know, I know when Hurricane Floyd came through when I was emergency management director then, and kind of on the fire department, we're dealing with all this stuff. Um, we kept losing phone service, mm -hmm. and the reason was that the uh, they have backup batteries at all these small switching mm -hmm. stations. They have the mm -hmm. Switch 96, as they're called, mm -hmm. and they only last a few hours. And uh. the um, phone company at that time had generators on their trucks, which they needed to get the phone lines back. <laughs> so they they'd have to park a truck there and mm -hmm. run a generator and charge the batteries that work for a couple hours. Yikes. And you know it was a it was a problem. Mm. But the um, so yeah, none of this stuff is. Uh, and I heard recently that mm. yeah, they, they do now have backup generators for the cell towers, but I think they have like four or six hours. I, I don't quote me on the exact time, but not a long time yeah. period that that'll work. So there's there's all kinds of communications issues out there. Mm. But anyway, I don't want to go too far. I have to get my stuff. And, let you guys okay. move on. Um, how to do? Um, probably most of this um, I'll be getting done on the 17th, and I'll, I'll get together with John and pass on whatever stuff. I bring him up to speed on anything Great. I may know, which won't take long. <laughs> and whatever documents I can pass along, I can find mm -hmm. useful. And um, and that's it. Okay. okay. Thank you very much for all the work. Mm -hmm. oh, so we won't even see you at another meeting? You never know what I'll show up. On that note, I won't be present the next meeting. You won't? Mm -hmm. I'll be out of You can always send us something to put in the agenda and we can read it. If, if there's something that's there's pertinent, if there's something pertinent, a, just pass along. You want to get a special email for yourself? Yeah. Well, I, I, I should probably just get the login for the one he's using that way. If there's something rolls in that way, it's, it's already there. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Yeah, I set it up without my name in it or anything like oh. that. So it's a yeah. emergency yeah. management at, okay. at the town site. Oh, so okay. It, it'll all just pass that over and you'll have all the stuff that can do mm. and so on. Great. Thank you. Jeez. We should have had a cake. So, um. <laughs> Champagne. <laughs> <laughs> we had an adjustment to the agenda and we skipped it. No, I do yeah. need to read um, Paul Cerruti's letter. Mm -hmm. okay. Want to read it? You want to read, just read it? it. Okay. Yep. Okay, so this is an update from Paul Cerruti um, associated with basically fire department issues. One, VTrans told me the culvert project has been delayed until mid to late October. So that's the surprise. Uh, two, we had our SCOBY meeting on Thursday and we'll be meeting FEMA again next week, directly related to the fire department. Mm. We have no updates from the insurance company as of this past Friday. They've been struggling with that for mm -hmm. months now. Mm. We have a new manufactured chimney being installed in the building um, on the 10th. Tomorrow. tomorrow. Mm. Okay. Uh, furnace and ductwork repair scheduled for the 18th of this month. Insulation contractor will insulate the station over the next few weeks on an as time permits basis. Uh, when the building is insulated and the bathroom is in working order, we will move out of the town hall. <laughs> uh, and we do not plan to do any other repair work on the station until the potential buyout is reviewed and a decision has been made. So that's just his update. Okay. And then he also said we can provide a person for the local hazard mitigation plan committee if there is one. If one is set up. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Um, thank you, Paul. Uh, 
Do we have an update for nickel stand? No, we just I just keep putting this on here, thinking that at some point we're gonna say um, to have our attorney just send them a letter and tell them to take down their fence. Should I make a motion to that effect now? You certainly may. Yeah, I'd, I guess I'd make a motion that we have our attorney send a letter to um, Margo Electric since they're not easy to correspond with, no, even at difficult. the board level. Yep. And tell them that this is a state a town highway and they need to remove their obstruction. Do you have can a I, yep, go ahead. Can we talk about it for a minute? Yeah, of mm -hmm. course. I do have a little bit of concern that if we play hardball with them, they might just decide to shut off the swimming area mm -hmm. since they do, I guess, own that, well, we right? Tried, they could. Yeah, that's a question too, but yeah. Because that would just be worse. You know, mm -hmm. that would take a bad situation mm -hmm. and make it worse. Do you guys have a sense of if you think they might do that? I'm pretty convinced that they would do that. Then I think we shouldn't. Well... <laughs> You really think they would mm -hmm. put up another chain fence and just not let people? I, people I nearly, I, I nearly guarantee it. What? I nearly guarantee that that would be their response. No, I don't think we, so. We, I think we lose, we lose, we, we lose one gate and gain another, and a lack of access. That's my opinion, because they have not been even moderately cooperative. But to date, the alter, the alternative for them is that we keep working with these other people on other alternative ideas, and they'd be better off just to stop and let things go back the way they were. Uh, I, if you're speaking for a Hardwick Electric, that sounds great, but I know it. So go ahead, Norm. I can say, I'll tell you that they pretty effectively uh, shut off use of that area anyway. They do. They're looking for any reason to shut off so access. I, I think, plus. Uh, as you, you've been advised before, the public has already established some rights to use that area that they could assert if they organized and did that. So mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah, they would rather. Yeah, they would rather not have anybody there. But the public, like you said, has some rights. Well, well they mm -hmm. they've said right along that uh, not uh, that they're not. Saying that people can't go there and use it, they right. just basically can't because there's no place to park. park and they can't right. go down there and they can't bring their mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and things right. there. It, it, so it's forth. it's an impediment. It makes it more difficult. But yeah. it's not like if it, it's not like you can't access it. It's just harder to do if you're going to portage a boat. It would be a whole other step if they were to try to say that no one can do that. And it would be. But I would not, not be surprised. So. So you think that they would try to block off the grass area so that people can't? You know, you know, what I'm saying. Oh uh, well. <laughs> I mean, I think that's what I haven't losing. spoken with them about this at all. Yeah. But I'm just mm -hmm. saying. I mean, that uh, they don't have to block it off. They, they have, have all it. they have to do is post it. Yeah. And then the uh, basically the, to the town. Mm -hmm. Like you folks, for instance, it's a class four road. It's your highway. Right. Mm -hmm. They're blocking the highway. What are you going to do about it? Right. Well, this yeah, is. We got to set a precedence at some point because they yeah. are. These are our class four roads. They are mm -hmm. our assets. It's true. And somewhere we have to draw the line and protect that mm -hmm. with with multiple class four roads mm -hmm. or, or any any mm -hmm. any road highway really for, for that <laughs> yeah. matter. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's just focused on class fours. But. Right. Mm -hmm. So I mean, Lizzie's Lizzie's point is essentially that you know, we're, we're, if we play hardball, they're probably going to play hardball back. I don't know the, if point, the point on the other side is that we do have to have the integrity of maintaining the qualifications of our roads since they are ours. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so uh, there's no easy answer here, but the motion on the table is to submit a letter from our attorney to Hardwick Electric requesting that they remove the gate from a road that is not theirs, which is a pretty straightforward request. Now that we're taking back our road, basically, we're also going to have to possibly do maintenance now and then. You know, the grader used to go up there, Norman said, you know, once a year. <coughs> they can't do any of that if they can't go down and turn around. So. But anyways, that's a future problem. What recourse would we have if they did close down 
their property, the swimming area, you're saying that there is some precedent set for people to have a legal right to swim there? I guess I don't really understand how that works. Well, I, <clears throat> well there's a letter you, you received from your attorney about mm -hmm. that. It's called proof that they've established prescriptive rights, I think is the, the legal term that you use mm -hmm. about that. Um, and yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, so it, um, and there, there is, there is, that is something on the law that, that people uh, do establish prescriptive rights to go over some other parcel of land to especially to access water, like in this case, or, uh, you know, for fishing and things like that. And they've established that over time and they mm -hmm. have over the last 70 plus years or whatever. Um, but they have a certain amount of rights there. Um, to be able to continue doing that. Mm -hmm. And um, and Hardwick has some rights to their property, and the question is how to make all this work well, and if they're, um, that's uh, probably a good discussion to have with them once you <laughs> reestablish your right to your vote. Okay, so there's a motion on the table. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Right. Let's get a letter drafted, please. Uh, okay. Along the same line, I'd like to uh, allow the other um, gate at the top of the road to continue to be closed and signed like they did last year so that the people who... I mean, once, once the lake is frozen and the people are wanting to go ice fishing, they could use the alternative road. Do you think that that, I, I mean, the uh, pent road part of it? I, I don't see that as necessary, but... Oh, okay. Well, that's just an opinion. Well, some of this just kind of happened like that, but the, with the idea of creating a pent road and, and certain... You're allowed to create a pent road with, with mm -hmm. certain restrictions on it. I yeah. Mean, that's right. certainly seems to make sense yeah. to do in this case, yeah. but... Uh, the first we'll step, wait and first see what they ask about. We have to, this, yeah. we have to start yeah. with this before. Right, yeah. okay. So. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Okay, so... Excuse me? We do have an executive okay. session. Alright, so... Uh, we're going to move into executive session, VSA 313A1E, to discuss potential litigation. Thanks. Thank you for, for your work.